And here we are yet again at another Monday. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And it is Monday. It is September 23rd. Now, you probably know what to expect, right? I'm going to share with you a hot penny stock that I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. That's what I do, folks. I'm a day trader and I primarily trade stocks under five bucks. And you can find those on every market. It's not about location. It's only about the price. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, one that's going to bump and jump. And when I'm looking for these hot penny stocks, I'm normally doing it on the charts because I can see imminent movement on a chart. You can see setup. You can see bullish patterns. And we're not wanting movement a week from now. We want movement tomorrow right? So we're looking for charts that have heat, imminent heat. When you find a chart that looks like it's ready to move, take the time to rummage around through their press releases and filings. See if you can find a catalyst. Any hot piece of news in the last 30 days can get a hot chart moving. Absolutely. So when you find a hot piece of news to match that hot chart, what do you got? That's right, Tammy, a hot penny stock. Thanks for paying attention. And I've got one for you today. This is ticker OPTT, Ocean Power Technologies. Now, I'm sure I've covered this at least once, maybe more than once, and I'm sure you're familiar with it too. But just in case you're not, well, even if you are, we're going to cover information about it. And I do have some new, some new information for you as well. So OPTT, she's got a hot chart. She is ready to break out right now, an atypical breakout chart, and I'm liking it. That's why we're looking at it in the first place. But she's got so much going on. I really, really do like this company, folks. And I'm going to tell you why as we're talking about it. OPTT is an American company out of New Jersey, Ocean Power Technologies. She finished today at 20 cents, and she was up roughly 10.5% today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange, though she is under a dollar. We got to concern ourselves with that with any major exchange stock. They have a minimum bid price requirement. You can't go under a dollar for too long. You go under a dollar too long, you get a warning. And I haven't seen the warning here yet. I haven't seen it. You go under a dollar for too long, you get six months to get that price up over a dollar. We, the investors, have to bid that price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. It can dip under a dollar during those days, but at the end, it has to close over a dollar. We do that, they're out of hot water. So we may be in hot water, we may not. I'm not real sure. But you get a lot of advantages with these penny stocks on the major exchange. First off, they're safer, folks. Major exchanges have a lot more rules. They're eyeballing these companies all the time. So that just makes our investment safer. Plus, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume on the major exchange compared to the OTC. And all your transactions are free on the major exchange. And you get the extra availability of trading aftermarket, pre-market, which you can never do with OTC. And there are some huge gains to be taken during those periods of time, folks. So what exactly is OPTT about? Well, we're going to dive on over here to our website, oceanpowertechnologies.com. And that's what they're about. That is a power buoy. They build these to specifications of whatever anybody needs, and they got all sorts of stuff. First off, it generates its own power. That's why it's called a power buoy. They have wave generators. Psh, 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 psh. As long as there's waves, this thing's moving back and forth, generating power for this. And once they have power, they can connect anything they want to these power buoys. They are connected to 5G, 4G satellites. They are connected for communication to ships, planes, uh, submarines, home base on, on land. These things have even got USB ports. What do you need those for? Because these things are way out there, folks. You can't see them from land. And they've got these UVSs, these unmanned vessels, these boats that are running around doing whatever it is you need them to do. Research, reconnaissance, surveillance, security. I mean, honestly, folks, I can see easily these being converted to use weapons as well because no person has to come anywhere near this and it can be way, way out on the water, bzz, 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 back and forth monitoring your perimeter of your shoreline. These things, they can now power up with the new patented dock and power buoy. These boats just, without anybody's help, pull up to these buoys and connect because they've got AI now. Of course they do. And they just repower. 
So nobody has to come out to them. They just constantly are going virtually, <laughs> well, I'm not going to say forever, but they go and go and go until they break down. Now, these are being used for all sorts of things. They are being used for science and research. We've got a lot of weather equipment on these things, so we can monitor the weather, monitor the sea, doing research in the water. We're also using it for, as I said, defense and security. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest things, folks. There's a lot of shorelines out there in the world, and everybody wants to feel safe. The world is covered in two-thirds water. That's a huge market. And I say that because I don't know of any other company that does this. There is definitely no public company. I have not seen one. And I haven't even stumbled across a private company. So I'm not going to say that they have a monopoly over the ocean, but they darn sure got first mover advantage. No doubt about that. They also work with a lot of other sectors like offshore wind. They generate power with these and this company helps them move that power to storage units on the bottom of the ocean and then get it up and out. They are also working with offshore oil and gas. As you can imagine, with all the people and equipment on these things, all the extra power and communication that you get from these buoys would be excellent for them. So there is a lot that these things can do. Your research and due diligence is going to be required because we can't go into all of it. But you've got an idea here that these power buoys are so far out that they're giving you security beyond human reach. Now, I don't know what happens if, say, a uh, Russian ship or a Chinese ship finds your buoy. Can they just pull it out of the water and take it? Can we turn it off? You can't use it? I really don't know. But they are hooking any equipment, even solar panels, wind generators, all sorts of things are going on these to generate power and get communication. We've got sonar and radar going on top of these and all sorts of other things, folks. So as I said, some more research and due diligence is going to be required. Now, when you look at the news, folks, there's a lot of news, which is really, really good. They are making a lot of deals with people. They are delivering. They are making advancements with their products. But we're not going to look at any of this. Not this. This very last piece up here is their Q1 2025 earnings call transcript. It tells us about all of that. So we're just going to dive into this to get the information that we need. And matter of fact, I got it over here. Now, we're going to start off by saying their revenues were pretty much even keel with what they were a year ago. But in saying that, operating expenses decreased by 39%, reduced their operating loss, and lowered their cash burn, which helps keep money in-house. So you're making more profits this way. Now, they go into more details about their financials. We're not going to go into all the details that we are going to look at the finances. I want to cover what the company is doing the deals they're making, how they're getting out there with all these other countries and resellers. In September of 2024, we announced that we had received a further contract by the Naval Postgraduate School in Monetary, California. This contract, which supports revenue generation in the near term, adds to the deployment of Ops Power Buoy as part of an ongoing initiative to enhance maritime domain awareness and connectivity in Monetary Bay and demonstrate the use of power buoys for multi-domain drone and communication integration. Sounds like they're getting the full package, the full boat. They're getting everything that is being offered, and they are really going to keep this area safe. They are including onto these, their buoys the AT&T 5G technology, as well as Ops' latest Marrows. This is their suite for AI capabilities. In August of this year, the company announced the signing of the latest of their four new reseller agreements targeted at supporting global critical services. These agreements include opportunities for partnering with allied nations in areas like the South China Sea, previously announced efforts in Latin America and in the Middle East, and serving global commercial markets. Uh, they're delivering to the Middle East right now. I know they've got that going on. So you can see anybody that has borders, not just here in America, anywhere in the world, is very interested in this technology. In August of this year, we announced a patent pending for our docking and recharging buoy technology. Man, how cool is that? In July of this year, we announced the signing of a reseller agreement with Geos Telecom a prominent provider of maritime communication and navigation solutions in Costa Rica. 
So you've got all these resellers for them in different parts of the world now that are going to be selling their products for them so they don't have to do the legwork. Of course, they're going to make some money out of it, so everybody's motivated. In July, we announced we had been awarded a contract for immediate delivery of power buoy equipped with our AI Marrows in the Middle East. We believe this order for solar and wind-powered systems highlights our ability to provide a carbon-free renewable Marrows platforms in most all marine environments across the globe. They believe they can put these AI buoys everywhere. In July, we announced the signing of another reseller agreement with Survey Equipment Services, a specialist in the supply marine survey and navigation equipment. The agreement focuses on provisions of their boat in the USA. In July, we announced a partnership with Unique Group, a United Arab Emirates headquartered global innovator in subsea technologies. As you can see, folks, there's a lot of information I'm not covering, and this is loaded. There was all kinds of information I'm not going to be getting into. See all this stuff down here? So if you want to do some due diligence and research, I would start with the most recent news press. They've got quite a lot here. And the last thing we're going to look at in this news press, June, we announced the signing of an OEM Original Equipment Manufacturers Agreement with Teledyne Marine, a division of Teledyne Technologies. So as you can see, there is a lot going on with this company. And you can see the headlines over here. They were awarded a $1 million contract for Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific's Project Overmatch Mission. Whew, isn't that a mouthful? Ocean Power completes AI-capable Merrill's power buoy for delivery to the Middle East. Uh, Ocean Power Technology completes WAM-V for immediate delivery to Latin America. They've got a lot going on, folks. And as I said, if they haven't got a monopoly, they damn sure got first mover advantage. And the world's covered by two-thirds water. So that is a huge market that they're tapping into right now. So let's go take a look at the relative volume for the company now. She's up. Looks like we're getting aftermarket activity. I think so because I looked at it earlier and the volume wasn't that high. We've been getting a daily average over the last 30 days of about 3.4 million shares. Today we did 5.4 million shares, up 2 million shares today. Share structure for OPTT. Outstanding share count is just under 100 million. Don't know what the insiders own, but I get the feeling it ain't very much. And the reason I say that, when I was reading through their financial, I saw them talk about how many shares are on the market. And they said they had 98 million, roughly, outstanding, the free float. That's the way they called it, the free float. Well, they said 98 million for the free float. Well, heck, that's right where we're at. Now, maybe the insiders own 100,000 shares. You know, it can't be very much because if you're rounding up, well, they didn't make a dent in that number. So I'm going to presume that our float is really, really close to 97 million. Market cap for the company, currently we're at about 17.7 million. Financials for OPTT. All right, we're going to look at the last four years. These are the annuals. And remember, we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers. So that's not 1,200. That's 1 1.2 million. Huge difference a few zeros make, right? Yeah, a zero ain't about nothing. It's about everything. So four years ago, we were at 1.2 million. Bumped it up year after year, and then really kicked it up here. Doubled it, folks. 100% increase virtually. Uh, their end of their fiscal year is April. So April 2024, they hit 5.5 million. And their profit margin, wow, coming from a minus million up to almost 3 million. That's like 50% profit margin right there. That's pretty good. Taking a look at their quarterly reports. Are they up or are they down? Yep. That's what they are, <laughs> up and down. So a year ago, we were at 1.2 million, making 663,000 profit. We made more money the last quarter, the one that just passed, 1.3 million, but not as much profit. We dropped like 50% in the profits. Well, one third actually, but still it dropped. Wonder why. Balance sheet for the company. We got to bring those three zeros over here as well. This top line's important. Cash and cash equivalents. Think of that as the bank. We got about 3.1 million in the bank. 
Total assets are about 29 million with liabilities down here at about 7 million. Hey, we got positive stockholder equity of about 22 million. So we've got stockholder equity, we've got revenues increasing, and we've got our profits in the black. So fundamentally, they're doing good and things are actually growing right now. And the biggest thing I'm excited about, there's no competition and everybody's going to want this. Once word gets out what these things can do and that you can build them to whatever you want them to be, I think this company is just going to zoom. I really do, folks. Take a look now at our disclosures. Yes, we do have a couple disclosures here and I want to share them with you. I want to take a quick peek at this 8K. I want to see if this is, no, that's a deal. I was trying to see if NASDAQ had contacted them. I really didn't dive into all these 8Ks. Nope, not that one. How about this one here? Just taking quick dives in and nope, I don't see any NASDAQ reaching out to them. These are the two filings I wanted to share with you. This one came out not too long ago, a couple days. On September 19th, the company entered into an amended, restated common stock purchase agreement with an institutional accredited investor. They got a big investor who wants to buy some of their stock. So they had to make some changes. Well, the only change they added was to say that the investor cannot buy more than 19.99%. Not allowed to have 20%. They make it sound like bad news. <laughs> I don't know. How much did you want to buy? Maybe it is. Far as I can see, I like that. You've got an investor sitting on the sidelines who wants to buy a lot of shares of this company, up to 20% of it. That's good. The other filing I've got here is interesting. As I was reading it, I became aware of a few things, and I think I understand it properly. They want to put $2.9 million worth of shares on the market, a public offering but they're complaining because they want to put on more. Why don't they? Well, from what I understand, they run out of shares. When you come over here to the share structure, you can normally see here, especially in America, how many shares they have authorized. We have no idea. But what I was reading here is that they want to put more on the market, but don't have enough. So they're going to request more shares, authorized shares, so that they can put more shares on the market. I guess. And that's how the company makes money when they need money and don't have big investors. But maybe they need those shares as well for that new big investor coming in. I really don't know. I haven't done a deep dive yet. Now, I do have one other piece of news I want to share here with you that is not directly related to this company, but indirectly it sure is. They tell us here that the Biden-Harris administration announced today up to $112.5 million in funding from the U.S. Department of Energy for its largest ever investment in marine energy. Now, folks, I want you to read this next line with me because this, it caught my attention. I knew something was grand about it, so I did a little more research behind this. Marine energy has great potential in the United States. The total available wave energy resource in the U.S. is equivalent to approximately 34% of all domestic power generation. It can supply one third of all the country's power. How much power does nuclear give us? Well, that was the question I asked. So I came over here to Google and put that in. They tell us nuclear provides us with just under 20%. Really? Just under 20%? I would have thought it was a lot more than that. And here we're talking about water, waves, which we don't have to make the waves. The waves are always there, right? And we can get 34% of our energy from waves. Why aren't we doing that? Wow. Now, would a hurricane just destroy our entire system and we'd have to build it back up? I don't know. That's something we have to think about, right? So that's all the information I have got for you folks. The company is a first mover as far as I'm concerned with their products. I have not seen any other competition. I don't know of any other company doing it. I think every country is going to want it, if not for anything else than for security. But of course, there's a lot of practical applications for a lot of working sectors out there. But security is number one on everybody's mind. And water, well, that's always vulnerable. And you're going to want to have something out there telling you what's going on. And you don't need people. You don't need people out there. And it generates its own power, so you don't even have to come out there and recharge anything. 
I think that's exciting, folks. I think it is where we are going. And I think this company is probably going to be the number one marine security company in the world. All right, outside of that, we need to look at the hot chart. Come on. Charting has got to be the best part of due diligence. And if you don't think so, you just haven't done enough charting yet. We are over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at ticker OPTT, Ocean Power Technologies. I've opened it up to the yearly chart so that you can get an idea of the highs and the lows and her overall general direction. She's been in a downtrend. She had a big pop here. She went from 12 cents up to virtually 60 cents. You got almost a 500% run right there. Then she crashed back through that 200, down underneath the 200 haul, and right now she is whipping around. All of our oscillators on our yearly chart are just starting to come around now. Let's jump on down to our four hour, six month version. Now the first thing that stands out in that chart are all those big jumps. They're quick, they don't last long, but they're great for scalping. You see something start going straight up in the air, folks, sell. Sell half of what you got, because when it comes back down, you can buy more shares, because you're gonna have more money. So we have a lot of these. Now this one here is about 50%, that's 30%, that one's about 25%. That one there is the 500% one, the one that got our attention. And it's strange, because she was in a very strong downtrend, look, it was getting stronger and stronger. She hit this low and she bounced immediately. Now, if you ever watch my videos, I'm always telling you, if you see a quick bounce off of a low, that tells you the company's got value. There are low bubble shoppers out there. Far as they're concerned, that's a flashing for sale sign, a blue light special at Kmart, if any of you remember that. So this bounced so quick, this company must have value. This thing jumped through to 200 and just kept going. She came down and she was hanging on until she fell underneath the other 200. Same power, same authority. This is the 200 hull. When she got underneath that, she started falling fast and furious. And when she put her head underneath the 200, that was it. She fell all the way down here. Now, over in this region, she started getting close to the 200 hull again. The one she broke through and made her fall. Now she's on top of it. Now, here comes our 200. It is falling downhill. We've had a breakout? Well, not really, because it was one day. She went up and came back down. Breakouts stay up there for longer than a day. That's a strong surge. That is a huge spike those days. So she was here down at 18 cents, and she went up to 32 cents. You're talking about 80, 85% run right there. But she had to come back down. You can't stand on a slippery slope. You will only normally see breakouts that stay up when the 200 has finally gone flat or is climbing, but not when it's falling. So when this broke out and she got way up there, you had to know to sell because your four hour chart says this is not a breakout time. She came all the way back down, landed on her other 200, the 200 haul. She's been on that for a while and now she is starting to push off of the 200 haul, which is a MA that likes the price the reason I say that is because the 200 haul is like the 200 day MA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together. But the 200 haul puts extra reverence on current prices. It respects the price. So you get a better movement from this MA to the price. They're, they're normally closer to each other. And when the 200 haul is underneath the price and turns up, it normally hits that price. Price doesn't push off of it. The MA pushes the price. And you normally get a push from the 200 haul to and through the 200 day MA, which is exactly what we had here. You had your crouch. See here, she's sitting on top of that 200 haul. She crouched down. Let me back up so it don't look too silly to you. And then she took off. Now, I like to think of that as the crouch and the pounce. If she's going along very nicely, floating on top of an MA, a strong one, and then she takes a sudden dip for no reason, not a fall, a dip. I normally think of that as a crouch, a cat just going down a couple inches and you know it's going to jump real high. Well, that's what happened here. It came just underneath the 200 with a wick. Push back up and there she goes. One, two, three bars were over the 200 approaching this support right here. Speaking of supports, let's back this up so we can get some. Now, it may be difficult, maybe easier if I just start over here. 
may be difficult to get supports considering that we don't have a lot of price here. Actually, we could get a lot of them here. But I'm going to make this quick and simple. I'm going to use my Fibonacci. The Fibonacci will give you magic numbers, folks. <laughs> There's a science behind Fibonacci, but it's mostly empirical science. People have noticed that the Fibonacci has a lot of effect in a lot of nature, and it seems to have a lot of effect on the charts as well. So you always poke from the top down so that you get your big Fibonacci numbers going up. So I'm going to use this here. This just gave me algorithmic Fibonacci supports and resistances that I will trade on. You can trust these. The price is going to use these. Now, when you have these real big ones down here, folks, that's not going to be the only supports. These are primary supports and resistances, but you can find softer, even strong resistances right in the middle. Now, a general rule is just that, one in the middle. Oh, let me get my line. You just draw a line down the middle of these big boxes and you would be impressed to see how often that is algorithmically correct. That's a little bit high. So I'll bring that one down a little bit. We're just splitting it in half. That's all we're doing. Now, I use these supports and resistances to get in and out of a trade. The stock will normally slow down as it approaches one. That's where it bumps its head. It's got to think about it and sometimes retreat. So I normally get out underneath these. But once it goes past it, oh, it's a free run to the next one. So I get in over top of these. And as it runs to the next one, I think about getting out or at least selling half before it hits that next resistance because it could fall. If it goes past it, I've still got 50% of what I was holding to go to the next one. Scalping folks is taking probable movements that have little risk. You're only having to determine where the stock is going to go in the next few minutes which is a heck of a lot easier than trying to figure out where it's going to go in five days or five weeks. Let's see now, what do we got on our oscillators? On our four-hour chart, let's zoom in so we can see that a little bit better. All right, oscillators. Looks like we have a recovery going on here with our PPO. Yep, that is just about to cross over. That is a power signal right there. I think we've got the same thing going on here with our MACD. Yes, we do. Just crossing over not only the bottom line, but also the signal line. That's your floor. And here come green bars showing us positive pressure. And our RSI is climbing. So everything is looking great here. Everything is in the right position. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour. So she was round that 200. She slipped under it here, hit this low, and just rolled right back up. And just smoothly, easily went over her 200 and went into that power surge. Bam, way up there. One, two, three resistances she went through. Then she came back through all three of them as well. Landing on her 200-day MA here, which is a little bit higher than where she was over here. She stuck it out for three days on top of that because all of these other MAs are above her head. Tough to climb when you're being pushed down. And that's what they're doing. They're pushing down. So the price has a hard time until these get underneath her. Well, look what happened right there. Right, our 50-day got underneath her. That gave her a little extra push. Started pushing her. Look at that stretch to the 200. I want that help too. Pull me up. So between the push and the pull, whoop, we went straight on up, folks, through every single MA, including our 200 haul. We are now above everything, tagging this strong support resistance at about 21 cents. She's hit her head on that twice. She's pulled back, but she's above her nine day. We're on our one hour chart. Things look smooth. She's floating. She's not dipping at all. And we still have our 200 haul to turn up. Everything else is turned up, even our 200 MA, but our 200 haul has not turned up yet. When it does, it's as strong as this 200. So that's going to give us more push up. This is looking brilliant. Oscillators, strong PPO, percentage price oscillator. Very strong, MACD. <laughs> She's cooling off a little bit, but look at that line. Does that look like it's cooling off to you? And our RSI now is clear up at 58, just bouncing off of the overbought and climbing. This is looking very, very nice. Look at our 15-day, 15-minute, uh, five-day. There's our hit through three resistances, down to our low bubble, flat, and now we're pushing up. Everything looks easy and smooth right now. We don't have any fire. We don't have any of this volume yet. That volume comes into here, folks. I think we could see another strong surge or run. 
I don't know about climb, how far she's going to go. I'm talking about probable movements, getting through all of these supports and resistances we have above our heads. This is a high here at 32 cents. I would expect her to push at least to 32 cents when that volume comes in. Oscillators here. Well, we're on top with our PPO, but it's a bit planted, going sideways now, just like our price after hours. Our MACD, look at that. We got a crossover about ready to happen. It's trying to get on top of that line, which is a power position. Our red bars are getting less strong, and our RSI is climbing. This isn't as powerful as our bigger charts, but it is in good position. She's above everything. And a quick glance at our five-day, five-minute. So here is a soft resistance. This is one that was developed as she was playing out, and I had to add her into it. And you could see it made a difference here. I had seen it back here and drew it, and it just follows as the chart goes on. And it definitely came into play. She's bumping her head on this soft resistance right now, but it's not a strong resistance. It's a soft one. Now, I can see it does probably go straight further over, but this is where she's fighting now. At 21 cents, she gets over this. She's going to push up to another soft resistance of 23.8 cents, hitting 24.8 cents. She can get over the top of that. She'll push to 31. All we need is volume, folks. Now, this company is hot because everybody is focused on the only company that's got this product. You want security on your water and you don't want people involved. You don't want to have to pay anybody, be responsible for anybody. This is your ticket. And I can see this being fire around the world. Honestly, folks, do your own research and then think about all the applications that come to your mind and how far this can go with AI attached to these things. Remember, this thing does communication. So I, you could put an AI brain out there that could be thinking, coming up with solutions for situations happening right now and send them off to you. Wouldn't that be outstanding? So as you can see, I'm excited about OPTT. Do your own due diligence and I bet you will be too. You know what I always say, Tammy, you are hot on it today, girl. Yes, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.